My name is Derek. Welcome to Shadow Jam, the channel that mostly doesn't rely on gimmicks. Sometimes I wish I had a magical camera that instead of having a single lens, it had two. And what if I could magically press a button and switch between the two focal lengths? Well, you'd think I'm crazy, and you'd be right normally. But what if I told you this mythical unicorn existed, and it's in fact called the Olympus AF-10 Twin? The Olympus AF-10 Twin, a plain looking generic box of a camera from 1991 that resembles a lot of the plastic cameras that were produced in the 80s and 90s that are filling our landfill sites or washing up on tropical beaches. I rather despise these plastic point and shoot monstrosities, however there is something a bit different and special lurking behind the iconic sliding door. It features two lenses, a 35mm f3.5 and a 70mm 6.3, allowing you access to two different focal lengths with a push of a single button. Woohoo! So how much would a camera like this cost? Well, let's turn to eBay. They've recently shot up in price, which is strange, but I wouldn't pay more than $20, which is about what I paid for this. This is point and shoot taken to the extreme. There is something so pleasurable about changing lens between 35 and 70. There's this beautiful clunk as an additional lens is brought into place or removed from the viewfinder. It's really quite magical. And even with my attention deficiency, I'm yet to become bored with it. I could do this all day. 35, 70, 35, 70, 35, 70. See, it never gets tiring. It offers twice as much fun as a zoom camera. The only thing stopping me is that I'm the cheapskate and the thought of burning through these batteries is now making me rather anxious. AF10 is powered by two CR123A batteries, which are likely to cost more than the camera itself. But don't be put off by this or the fact it uses batteries. As long as you don't swallow them, put them in fire, then you should be perfectly safe. Loading the film is simple and is automatic. Simply pop in the film and leave the leader near the take-up spool and the camera will do the rest. Who needs an APS camera? Taking photos is simple. Open the camera by sliding the door open. The hardest choice will be deciding if you want to go wide or portrait. 35 or 70, wide or portrait. 35 or 70. Then simply frame the subject and depress the shutter lightly to focus. A few things could happen now, but don't panic. Provided you put the batteries in the right way, then it's unlikely to end in death. A green light will turn on, which means the camera is focused and ready to rock and roll. If it flashes green, which it never tends to do, then it's having problems focusing and perhaps you're a little bit too close. If an orange light starts flashing, then the flash is charging and once it's a continuous light then you're all good to go by default the camera is set to auto so do remember to turn this off via the button on top if the camera flashes other colors then don't worry you're one of the 4.5 percent of the world who suffers from some form of color blindness. I'm not sure what the sound of the shutter sounds like as the drone of the camera advancing film sounds like a much discontented kitchen appliance which has mixed one bowl of cookie dough too many. As the camera is point and shoot, everything is automatic. Focus is automatic, exposure is automatic, shutter speed is automatic and between a 15th of a second to 750th of a second. There appears to be no warning at slow shutter speeds which might need to keep the camera steady. I can't talk too much about it all because it's all automatic. Top of the camera features an exposure counter, flash data shooting modes and the like. Other features of the camera are a continuous shooting mode, but to be honest, it's too slow to be useful at all, as well as a self timer and a self timer with continuous mode, which takes two photos. How does it shoot? Well, let's take a look at the results. These were shot using Kodak Gold 400. Film choice these days is mostly dictated by price, but this film provides bright, bold, and colorful images. The images that are produced by this lens are fairly sharp, 
With shooting in Australia, it can often be glary on a cloudy day. Often when taking uh, pictures of landscape, the contrast between the darkness of the mountains and the bright sky can cause problems with blowouts. Perhaps it was a day, but with this camera and film, I felt the results were spot on, which honestly surprised me, as I wasn't expecting such clarity. Um, there were one or two photos which weren't correctly focused. Whether this was through user error or issues with the camera focusing, I'm not too sure, but we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. So who is this camera for? So if I was completely honest, I'm kind of struggling really this one. And that's the problem, even with its quirky lens system, it doesn't quite do enough for me. It's a perfect camera for taking happy snaps, but people don't take happy snaps anymore. The design of the camera is rather interesting from a curiosity viewpoint, and it's something that no doubt collectors might be interested in. It's probably a bit too noisy and large to be used in street photography, but if it wasn't, then having access to two focal lengths would certainly come in handy. I'm certainly not a street photographer due to my introverted nature. The optical quality isn't too bad, but it's not amazing either. If I was looking for a camera that defies design convention in a rather clever way by offering two focal lengths without the headache of a zoom, you can live with its point and shoot nature and rather noisy operation, then this could be my camera of choice. Thanks for watching my 12th episode of Shutter Jam and my last for 2016. Next year I'll be back with more of everything where we might aim for 24 new episodes. If you like this episode, then please like, share and subscribe. Thanks as always.